So what is Enochian magic, or is it magic at all? Certainly Enochian magic, as it was designed by John Dee and Edward Kelly, is a form of ceremonial or ritual magic intended to summon forth discorporeal intelligences from what Jung would later call the collective unconscious realm of the mind, using a very complicated cipher as a double-blind method to filter out potential interference by the scryers themselves. In short, Dee and Kelly designed the world's most complicated Ouija board, or at least such was the accusation posed against them by Merrick Casabon, 1599-1671, who claimed that the duo were communicating with ghosts of the dead rather than any class of angels, thus tacitly charging them, long ex post facto, with necromancy. To this extent, the ensigns of creation used in their scrying sessions as a means of decryption were wrongly associated with the 72 demons of the Goetic Shemham Farash. But the question here isn't really only, was Enochian magic authentically alike traditional ceremonial or ritual magic works of the past? The real question is, what is and what constitutes magic? James G. Fraser, 1854 until 1941, wrote in his 1890 tome, The Golden Bough, that magic was a sympathetic superstition that associated by psychological transference attributes of one person, place, or thing onto another, usually a fetishistic totem or idol, and usually by the shedding of blood as the mediating agent, such as in religious sacrificial animal slaughter. However, as we can see from Dee's tediously complex cryptographic angelology, it is the faith of the aspirant alone, and not their blood, that necessarily infuses a magical egregore. Dee's unwavering belief in the reality of his angels may or may not be considered well-founded, or else betrayed, by anyone alive today. What Dee himself believed we can only speculate about, but never fully know, let alone understand. Did Dee truly believe in the power of his angels to deliver messages across impossible distances, like carrier pigeons? Or did he only psychosomatically convince himself of the higher power of these intelligences, and thus fall prey to schizophrenic psychosis? Was he only originally seeking a means to finding buried treasure and simply got carried away? As I've said before, each passing tick of the clock brings us one second further away from his lifetime and from being able to comprehend his mind state. The most likely explanation for John Dee's as yet unbroken cipher is that it has not been solved because it is gibberish. It was meant as subterfuge to disinform and confuse the enemies of Queen Elizabeth I while Dee traveled abroad. To this extent, one may say Dee's Enochian magic is more like traditional sleight-of-hand trickery than a working method for summoning supernatural angels. The entire estuary of Enochian angels caged in the four elemental watchtowers may be all just one enormous misdirection to distract Dee's espionage to distract from Dee's espionage activities. This explanation is the one most probably true. 